Man, I swear, sometimes you ask and the universe just delivers. I was just lamenting the fact that the Air 58 is no longer available for purchase, and literally almost as soon as I finish that script, I get a package in the mail from the guys over at G-Wolves. Inside is a copy of their Skull Mouse and an early alpha version of their upcoming mouse, the Hottie. The Hottie? 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 I'm going to say Hottie a lot today. It's lightweight, it's got an ambi shape, it might be exactly what I'm looking for right now. You ready? Let's go. Yo, I'm Brian P, you're watching Bad Seed Tech, and today we're taking a look at the hottie, lightweight, symmetrical gaming mouse from G-Wolves. Now, for transparency, as I said, G-Wolves did send this out for review, but as you should know by now, doesn't affect my review in any way. Do I really need to keep saying that every time? Don't you guys just kind of like get the idea by now? So the hottie has a hexagonal top shell, triggers, and lower, but the sides are solid, and there's a lot to like here. Shell feels really nice and strong, no side flex, no creaking. Measurements are 124 millimeters long, 62 millimeters at the front, about 65 at the rear, 57.5 at the grip with a height of just about 40 millimeters. It weighs 64 grams on my scale, which is exactly what my Air 58 weighs on my scale. But visually and in hand, it shares a lot more in common with the G Pro Wireless than it does the Air 58. The big difference I noticed right away is that the rear flares out more. It actually gives me a place to anchor my pinky finger. That way I can get a predictable grip every time. Something that's kind of a challenge for me with the G Pro Wireless due to my hand size. It's a six button ambi shape, but it's not true ambidextrous as it lacks side buttons on the right side. No comfort grooves on the triggers. The triggers are split from the body. Very minimal amount of pre-travel, and there's a fair amount of side play. Side buttons are, again, very similar to the G Pro Wireless in size and shape. These are kale switches. On my copy, the front button was very crisp, no pre-travel. The rear button had a fair amount of play and pre-travel. It didn't feel quite right. Scroll wheel feels really good here, really light tactile, great texture on the wheel. It does require a little force to depress, and it does have a little more side play than I'd like to see. It almost feels like it has side-to-side -side actuation. Hopefully, this is something they correct in the final production version. DPI switch requires a little force as well. I can't see any issue with accidental hits coming off the scroll wheel. The clicks here are kind of on their own. They don't really feel like anything I have. They don't feel like a final mouse. They don't feel like a G Pro Wireless. They feel like guess closest to like a Model O, but still not really. Coating here is matte. It's really tough for me to compare this. It's really grippy. It's not weird, chalky like a Zowie, and it's not slick like a G Pro Wireless. It does fingerprint a little bit, but it cleans up easy. I'm a fan. We've got a 3389 sensor. This has seven steps by default to range from 400 DPI up to 16,000. There will be software released soon enough so you can get a better idea of what's going on with the DPI steps here. 400 and 800 were pretty predictable. Outside of that, I really couldn't call it. I did attempt to load the Skull software and use it with this mouse, but it wouldn't recognize it, and I did not want to risk flashing the Skull firmware to this mouse. The feet here are in telemouse shape, so it's really easy to find aftermarket feet for it. Stock feet here are Teflon and rounded. They're honestly great. I have to say that this early copy came with no mouse feet whatsoever, I was able to nick a set from the extras that are included with the skull. I would imagine they'll be the same in the production version. Also notice there's a little spot in the mold around the sensor itself that looks like it may be a spot for a glide as well, but we'll have to wait for that final production version. Notably absent here is RGB of any sort. There is none. It doesn't even have a DPI indicator. And this cable. This is the same cable that's on the skull mouse. I'm just gonna say it. This is the best stock mouse cord I've seen so far. I'm not sure what, if anything, you would even gain by going to a paracord mod. This feels so close to an actual paracord. This is the first stock cable I haven't felt the need to replace. It's just excellent. So as I've been bouncing back and forth between the Air 58 and the Ultralight 2 since that review, the lightweight wasn't much of an adjustment, but I'm working on moving to a fingertip grip and increasing and playing with higher sense so my game still feels a little off. This new style of play for me definitely has me in a period of adjustment right now, but as far as weight, size, and shape, this mouse lands exactly where I need it. It's medium frame means I've still got plenty of room to adjust the mouse in and under my palm in a way that I can't with the Air 58. And out of the box, it's the right size for me without having to resort to the infinity skins. My hand runs 20.5 centimeters top to bottom and 10.5 centimeters across. I really feel like I can get away with just about any grip on this mouse, but for larger hands, you're probably gonna be looking at claw or fingertip grip here. Really. If you're curious about it, just look up any sizing guide or any video, like a Rocket Jump Ninja video that talks about sizing on the G Pro Wireless. 
all that information is definitely going to apply to this mouse. Pricing on this mouse is set to be $67 US before shipping. It has been delayed slightly, but just keep an eye on my social feeds. I'll let you know as soon as pre-sales go live. This, like the skull, will be available through shop.xraypad.com. They were planning a white version of this as well. Looks nice. I really hope the final retail is as feature-packed as the skull, where you get like two sets of additional feet, additional front and rear glides, and an extra cord, all packed in this collector's tent. Super nice retail experience. And I will have a full review of that mouse out very shortly as well. I think for my goals right now, this is going to be my main for a little bit. There's just a whole lot to like here. And while this version honestly feels a little early, if the final production of the Skull is any indicator, I think we've got a very solid mouse on our hands for people that like that G Pro wireless shape but want to cut that almost 20 grams of weight. I really like this thing. It's going to be interesting for me to see if Logitech has any kind of response to this thing. Not in terms of creating a new product, just in terms of litigation. I don't think Final Mouse has a dog in this fight because I really don't think they're concerned about it and their mites aren't for sale most of the time. It kind of leaves a gap for others to step in and do what these guys are doing. But Logitech has both the interest and the pockets to pursue that legally if they wanted to. It's not lost on me that the X-Ray Pad website has a disclaimer washing their hands of being responsible for any sort of patent infringement. Never seen that on a retail website before. We still have a couple weeks before we see how the Model O- is gonna fit into any of this. There's just a ton of mice coming out right now. I still have reviews coming up real quick for the XM1 from Endgame, as well as the lightweight stuff from Extrify. As predicted, this is going to be a very crowded market from now until the end of 2019. I will link to both G-Wolves and X-Ray Pad in the description. Any questions, hit me in the comments or drop by the Discord. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, stay up.